Uh, Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, a while ago, I saw someone attempt to make an antenna using sticky copper foil tape. So I thought I'd give it a go myself. Now, after searching Amazon, I found this copper foil tape, which was actually advertised as slug repellent. However, as it was relatively cheap, I ordered a roll. Now for about six UK pounds, this 20 meter roll arrived next day. Now the specification of this particular copper foil tape is 25 millimeters wide and 0.05 millimeters thick. So it's very thin and it does tear quite easily. Now I made a couple of antennas with this, the first being a vertical mounted dipole for 70 centimeter handband. And then the second was a vertical dipole with a center frequency of 145 megahertz. Now, which one do you think will work best? Well, continue watching to find out. First, I needed to calculate the length of each element. So using an online dipole calculator, I got to around 16 and a half centimeters per element for a frequency of 433 megahertz. So I first cut one element against the tape measure at 17 centimeters. I thought that that would be enough extra in case of fine adjustment. It's easier to remove than add to each element if required. I had a length of RG58 that was already terminated with a PL259. So all I had to do was cut back the other end and expose the braid and the inner conductor. Then I just bent them like so and tinned them with solder. So they would be easy to solder to the actual copper foil tape. Now I also tinned one end of each of the elements so that it was less time messing around and risk tearing the full tape when connecting the coax. Now attaching the braid and the center conductor of the coax to the copper full tape was actually easier than I thought it was going to be. After it was connected, it was now time to mount it. And the easiest option I could see was to stick this to my shack window. Now as the copper full tape has a removable backing, which leaves a sticky side, this actually stuck to the window quite well. I also placed some sellotape over the coax to help keep it in place and not put too much strain on the copper foil. As mentioned before, it can tear quite easily, so this should help. Now, once installed on the window, I wanted to check this WR. So with my Nano VNA analyzer, I performed a sweep of the 70 centimeter handband. Now, to my disappointment, it wasn't that great. And looking at the plot, it appears it's too short. Even though I allowed for some extra adjustment, it just wasn't enough. Now the SWR was below 2.5, so I thought it would be okay to hook up this fantastic homemade antenna to my TS2000 and see if I could hear anything or even try and open some of the local repeaters. Well, I could only open my local 70 centimeter repeater, which is about four miles away. But that was about it. Even scanning around with the SDR provided that there wasn't much activity or it just wasn't working very well. So I then decided to make the VHF version centered on 145 megahertz, which should provide the ham two meter band and hopefully some reception either side of this frequency. So I recut some elements, but this time each element was around 50 centimeters in length. Now when placing the antenna on the window in the same place as the UHF version was installed, it was apparent that it was too long for my window. So the bottom element kind of goes off the frame. Now without much expectation, I now connected this to my Nano VNA and performed the SWR sweep. To my surprise, it actually had an excellent SWR across the whole of the two meter handband. So 144 to 146 megahertz. So I readjusted the start and end frequencies from 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. And that showed also a relatively low SWR across the whole sweep. Take from that what you will. Noticing that the primary dip was in fact where I calculated it to be around 145 megahertz, it seems to be a winner. So the first test was to hook it up to the SDR receiver to see what I could hear. Two, scattered, cumulonimbus, 3,000 
1,500 feet, temperature 9, dew point 2, WMH 100. Quite pleasingly, it appeared to work quite adequately on the AM airband, receiving aircraft transmissions quite clearly. I was also able to decode some ACARS messages using multi-mode COCA for the Mac. Now, broadcast radio worked really well too, with lots of stations being received from far and near. I was also able to open a 2 meter repeater around 15 miles away. Unfortunately though, its bearing meant it was going through the house, so its received signal strength wasn't that great. I guess with this type of copper foil tape, you could also make some kind of Yagi antenna. You would just need a flat movable surface to stick it onto. Maybe something like a kitchen plastic breadboard. Maybe I'll try this in the future. Now, obviously there are many variables at work here and will alter the antenna's performance, down to the thickness of the copper tape the width and even the placement of the dipole elements. As you could see, they were not exactly lined up. However, part of the ham radio hobby is to experiment, learn and build things. Buying ready-made antennas is easy, but making something which then works provides more satisfaction. Well, at least for me. If you agree with this, then please comment below and click that thumbs up button. If you've made antennas from some kind of other weird and wonderful material, then let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure it'll prove interesting to read and learn about. Until the next video, guys, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.